First of all, uh, I have two messages from downstairs. Uh, the first one is at the Net Academia standing. If you can write an exploit, you will immediately get a cup of palinka, which is a special Hungarian spirit. And the other one is uh, if you can fill out <coughs> a request form at the Vodafone, at Vodafone, then you will immediately get a pogacha, which is impossible to translate into, into English. I suppose it's a salty cake or something like that. Thank you. And now we continue with the, the new speakers, uh, Mr. Laszlo Tóth and Ferenc Spala. And I will ask, ask them to introduce themselves. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everybody, my name is Ferenc Spala and my friend is Laszlo Tóth and we are going to talk about database security. But please note that this is the last SQL injection in our presentation. Uh, I know SQL injection is an all-time favorite. Uh, it's here, but not in this presentation because we want to show you it is worth thinking differently about database hacking. You know, both of us are working as a security specialist uh, at Deloitte Hungary and uh, we are also members of the Hacktivity team. This is why I'm wearing green, little green man or whatever. Uh, but uh, what we have for you today, we have four different topics uh, from four different words. First is hacking the Oracle client. We will show you uh, some kind of post exploitation. So what are your options if you hack the database administrator's workstation, for example. Then we move to network level, and we will hijack database connections, Oracle database connections, of course. Then we will play a little with Aura debug and Metasploit. And last but not least, we will play a little with uh, MSSQL as well. But first things first, uh, hacking the Oracle client. Uh, we did some research on the number one Oracle uh, client driver called OCI, and we have found uh, really interesting things. And yes, we are talking about post exploitation, client side hacking, uh, driver hacking, and yes, it is DLL injection. But DLL injection is old. I mean, everybody in this room can inject his DLL into any process. Not a big deal. The OCI driver ships with its symbol file. There is a pretty solid documentation written by Oracle. So it's really easy to identify and hijack the connect functions. It's so boring. All you have to do is debug the OCI driver. It's a piece of cake, as I mentioned before. Uh, identify the interesting functions. I recommend two for you. The first one is OCI auth set. It is called every time when a username or a password pass from the client to the driver. I mean, password in clear text. So if you hijack this function and somebody logs in, you get the username and the password. The second one is OCI server attach. It is called when other connection parameters like IP address, uh, port, service identifier are passed uh, from the client uh, to the driver. So it's a good start. Of course, OCI is written in C. So you have to do some uh, memory kung fu because you will find a lot of pointers and you have to follow the pointers to point another pointer, etc., etc. But that's all. You can implement your own versions of these functions. You can wrap up your DLL, download or write piece of code for DLL injection and function redirection. There are many libraries out there on the internet. And the problem is in most of the cases, you will get nothing because he hijacked the connect functions. So you have to wait for the user to enter, enter his credentials. If you miss that, because he's already logged in, you will get nothing. That's the problem. And so it's not so sexy, let's say. This is why we kept going and we found something really weird. Not the cat, but... Uh, it is possible to get the username and the clear text password from a single SQL statement. Every time when the user executes any select, insert, update, whatever, it is possible to steal his username and clear text password. Sounds good, yeah? So, there's a function called OCI statement execute. 
It is your best friend, believe me. And I'll show you why. Here is a screenshot from Oli Debug. You know, in every hacker presentation, there must be a screenshot from a debugger. So here it is. We set a breakpoint to OCI statement execute, and we are interested in its first parameter. It's a pointer, of course. If you follow this pointer, you get an OCI structure. In this OCI structure, there's an other pointer. If you follow this one, you get another OCI structure. But in this structure, take a look at this area. The first four byte block is a pointer. It points uh, to the username. I mean, username in clear text, so no more magic required. If you follow this pointer, you get the username. Next byte is uh, the length of the username. The next byte is a marker. The next 8-byte block is the encryption key. And guess what? The remaining part is the encrypted password. So what's wrong with this picture? There is an encryption key. There is an encrypted password. Only one thing is missing, the encryption algorithm. And this is DES. Why? Because Oracle loves DES. So, and the main problem is this uh, flow or problem lies in the OCI driver itself. So it's not client specific. Every single Oracle client that uses the OCI driver is affected. And it doesn't really matter what do you do as a programmer. You can clear up everything from the memory. The OCI driver stores the credentials in this way. And by the way, it remains in the memory after the user closes the session. And, of course, we have a live demo for that. Uh, here is... Whoa. Here is the victim. As you can see, he's running Todd, a well-known Oracle client. Uh, I have logged in, so I can run SQL queries, as you can see. And if we move to... The attacker, here is our matter pattern uh, shell. As I mentioned, this is a post-exploitation technique, so somehow we gain the matter pattern shell from the client. Uh, we implemented this whole OCI hacking stuff as a matter pattern extension because we love Metasploit, and it's really handy. So all we have to do is... Uh, Metasploit is the new black. Yeah. Migrate into the Toad process. It's standard uh, Metasploit Kung Fu. It takes a few seconds. Yep. Uh, and we can load, uh, just clear up, we can load our OCI Oralog extension. This will do the magic, you know. Okay, it is loaded. I show you the log file because I'm not cheating. As you can see, it's empty, only one line, a debug message uh, in the log file. And if we move back to the victim, we don't have to wait for a login, we only wait for a single select or insert or whatever. Oh, uh, good. If I want, yeah, uh, he's the manager anyway. Uh, I'm, I just managed him. Yeah. So I need to hook the, uh, the OCI statement execute function because we won't see anything. And now, if we run a single select, this one, for example, hacking this one, and take a look at the log file again. And as you can see, username, password in clear text. By the way, we got the SQL as well, but who cares? Username and password. So, sounds good, I guess. And now I clean up everything, and this was just the beginning. Now we are moving to network level with Laszlo. Uh, just play, and here it is. Okay, so let's move to the server side and see why we can talk about session hijacking in case of Oracle. History. 
In 2009, I released the Python as proxy tool. It had many features. For example, it was able to hijack uh, Oracle session. It was able to downgrade authentication protocols. For example, in case of JDBC, it was able to downgrade the newest AES-based protocol to the oldest DES-based one. And of course, it was able to log the authentication data for offline brute forcing for John the Repair and Warout BF. And everybody should heard about the second main event because TNS poison attack uh, was released because of a communication glitch between the Oracle and the researcher. So Yoxin Coret just released a great research paper and the working proof of concept code. Both tools uh, have its own limitation from some point of view. For example, in case of PyTNS proxy, you somehow you have to redirect the client uh, to the proxy. You can do this with a simple classic ARP cache poisoning attack and some IP tables kung fu, meaning port redirection, so the transparent proxy stuff. And in the case of the proof of concept code in TNS poison, it works only with the databases who has six character long service identifier. The default service identifier is four character long, so it's a, it's a quite strong limitation, but anyway, this is just a proof of concept code. But what are we talking about? Uh, in Oracle, the listener process is responsible to handle the network connection. So after the initial connection setup, uh, the listener starts a new process, a new Oracle process, or a thread in case of Windows, and hands over the connection to the new Oracle process. And after that, the Oracle process will handle the authentication and the data exchange. In a clustered environment, the listener process is responsible to redirect the given client to a given Oracle instance. And the Oracle database can send register communication to the listener. Hi, I'm able to serve this service identifier and this port and, and this IP address. The main problem with this register communication, it doesn't have any authentication in it which means anybody can send registered messages uh, to the listener, and the listener will accept it even if it is a standalone uh, Oracle configuration. So what's happening? TNS Poison sends its registered communication to the listener, and when a victim connects to the listener, a certain percentage of the victim will receive a redirect message. So the victim will be redirected an attacker-defined IP address and port. And if you have a right tool, and in the TNS poison proof of concept code there is a proxy, you can forward the communication to the database server, so the communication will go through you. And the main problem, there is no patch for this vulnerability, and won't be in the near future. Oracle said it will be remediated in the next version of Oracle in 12C that will come out, might be in the next, beginning of the next year. So as I already mentioned, you can redirect a certain percentage of the Oracle client. The communication will go through you, so you can do anything with it. You can sniff it, alter it, or send your own as SQL command. But the question is how? And this is where Python as proxy can help you. TNS poison sets its register communication to the listener. The victim will be redirected to the Python as proxy, and all of the communication goes through the Python as proxy from that point. In the TNS protocol, there is a quit message. And when the PyTNS proxy sees this quit message, it won't be forwarded to the server. Instead, it will start a new thread and waiting for connection. And an attacker can connect to this thread and the initial connection setup will be simulated and the authentication will be simulated. And when the attacker sends its uh, SQL query, it will be forwarded to the database server and the same communication channel or socket that was used by, the used by the victim. And because of that, when the database server receives this SQL query, it will be run in the name of the victim. So this is how the hijack works, as simple as that. And why the simulation? Because if you simulate the initial connection setup and uh, uh, authentication, we can use the normal Oracle clients as an attacker. So it can be handy. Okay, so you can, use, you can execute SQL commands in the name of the victim. And of course, we have a live demo for this one also. As I already mentioned, there is a limitation in the TNS poison proof of concept code with this six character long service identifier. So I, we implemented a Metasploit module for the TNS poison attack that supports all possible service identifier lengths, which, as I know, it's 12 character long. 
This is how can you use it. It's quite easy, just set up the target database and the target service identifier, and all of, but certain percentage of the communication will be redirected to this IP address and port. And the Python hash proxy is just fade for the connections. But before I'm running this exploit, let's see what's happening in the server, at the server side. As you can see, this database or listener serves this uh, service identifier only with one instance. And this instance is a local server. Let's run the exploit and see what changed. And as you can see now, this service identifier now has two instances. And one of the instances is a remote server, and uh, the IP address of, and the port of this remote server is that that we just configured in the module. Okay, let's connect to this database as a victim. As I already mentioned, just a certain percentage of the Oracle client will be redirected. So we have to connect a couple of times until we will be redirected. And now we just redirected. I know this because of the slight delay in the authentication. And now if you just check the output of the Python hash proxy, as you can see, all of the communication will be forwarded to the original database server. And in this connection, the sysdba, because the sys user is a sysdba user, which is the highest privilege in Oracle, can work in, an, in this connection. So just as simple as that. And when he finishes his work, he can just exit from the database. And if we just check what happened with Python as proxy, as you can see, a new hijack thread started and waiting for connection and this port. And Python TNS proxy says you have to use this version of client and Windows. So let's do that. This is the AutoCAD machine and we are using the given version. You have to use this username and password uh, because of the authentication simulation while you connect to the hijack thread. So, so it yeah. Existed in the and as you can see, we successfully connected. And if I'm issuing the who am I command in Oracle, as you can see, this is the sys user and not this user here. So we successfully hijacked the sysdba connection to the database. Okay, some notes about the hijacking. You have to use the same client version that the client used because the TNS protocol is a huge animal. So it's, not, it's very platform and version dependent, so it's not easy to emulate the stuff. Because of that, the authentication simulation, you have to use the proxy test username and password for hijacking because there is some strange uh, security measure in the Oracle client drivers, uh, which tries to check whether he communicates with the right database. But this uh, security measure can switch off if you are using the SSDBA at the end of the SQL plus uh, command. So you can switch off. So SysDBA is the highest privilege, so you don't need the extra security there, Oracle things. Now you have an easy to use Metasploit module for the TNS poison attack, which is, I think, very important. And uh, if there is a complex database installations out there that uses global database ID, in that case, we need further testing. Okay, you successfully hijacked the sysdba connection, you are lucky enough, just we uh, was in the previous demo, we were in the previous demo. From that point, you can use the already back programming language you, uh, to hide your presence or escalate your privilege further. And everything can be done in the Commodore 64 style. History. 
at Black Hat, David Litchfield uh, uh, in 2011 showed how can you run operating system level command in Ora Debug. In the same year, I showed how can you run operating system level commands in a much simpler way. I showed how can you switch off the normal auditing and sysdba auditing in Oracle with help of the Ora Debug. And even I showed how can you switch off the password validation uh, and Windows, meaning you can log in with a good username but a wrong password, so backdooring Oracle. Okay, but what is this Ora Debug? The Ora Debug is a command that can be called from SQL Plus. It can be accessed uh, by sysdba only, which means we are talking about post exploitation, but hey, we just hijack the sysdba connection. And because every uh, Ora Debug command will be logged into, into trace files, and sysdba can delete these trace files, you can hide your presence in the database completely. And this Ora Debug command has uh, two very useful features for an attacker. You can call any function that is accessible from an Oracle executable. And you can write the Oracle process memory. Of course, you can read it. So yes, you have arbitrary memory write and execution with Ora Debug. This is the holy grail of, of the exploit developers. Okay, how it is looks like. This is how can you switch off the sysdb audit and the standard audit. With the Ora Debug poke sub commands, you have to write to a certain place in the Oracle memory. Of course, this address is dependent on the given version, but in the next slide, thanks to Alex, I'm going to show you some, uh, uh, how can you switch off the sysdb audit without knowing these memory addresses. And this is how easy to run an operating system level command. The trick is uh, you have to use tops instead of, instead of spaces when you type in the commands because Ora Debug assumes a new parameter after the space. And why Commodore 64 style? Because in the ancient time, uh, the memory of the Commodore 64 was manipulated with the peak and the poke command, just like with Ora Debug. I received this screenshot from Peter Sir when he last year presented uh, at the Hacktivity Abbey the virus viruses past, present, and, and future. And you can see the peak and the poke commands. So Commodore 64 in 1982, VS Oracle in 2012. So all tricks still work. But what is this, or how can you switch off the sysdb audit without knowing these memory addresses? There is an initialization parameter in Oracle that can be used to switch off or on the sysdb audit. Uh, the sysdb audit is used while a user is used for log every action of a user while he is logged in as a sysdba user. And as you can see, you cannot switch off while the database is running. Of course, you can switch off in the SP file, just add the scope equals SP file to the alter system command, but you can switch off with Ora Debug. Because this variable is a variable, like this initialization parameter ends up as a variable in the system global area. And with Ora Debug set for subcommand, you can manipulate this area. And of course, you have to set this variable to zero. And from this point, your action won't be logged. So you hide your presence completely in the database. Okay, until now, this was history. What is the new thing here? The new thing is that we wrote a Metasploit library that simulates a li uh, Linux 32-bit client for the given version and the screen. And based on this library, you can, uh, we wrote another uh, two Metasploit module, one for the command execution and one for payload execution because we have arbitrary memory write and uh, execution. And of course, we have a live demo for this one also. So we don't need the redirection anymore. And let's see the Ora Debug exec module. Quite simple, you have to set up the database connection with a sysdba username and uh, password, and this is the command. I'm using the dollar sign IFS dollar sign because I couldn't figure out how can you insert tops into the uh, MSF console, so the module will replace this dollar sign IFS dollar sign with the top character. But before I'm running the exploit, I'm going to show you, I'm not cheating, so... There is, no, there is only these two default user and the, and the server, administrator and the guest. And as you can see, we just sent the net user command or a debug uh, to the database, 
uh, with the top characters. And the function returned with zero, so it, it was successful. And if we check the server, I guess together. As you can see, we have this new shiny or debug user here through Oracle. So we have the operating system now. Because on Windows, the Oracle runs and then the system account. So you have full privileges. Let's see the payload. Execution. I'm doing the same, just setting up the database connection with the sysdba user. And as you can see, I'm setting up a payload, which in this case is a meta-interpreter bind TCP payload. And I have a meta-interpreter session on the database server. And this meta-interpreter session runs in the memory of the Oracle, so we didn't touch the disk. So there is no clue something happened there. But how can we use this uh, through a hijack session? This module has a parameter called export. If we set this parameter to true, the module won't connect to the remote database. Instead, it will generate a SQL file with the necessary or a debug poke command, so the, payload, the memory variety command with the payload content. To run this, uh, to, to have these poke commands, we need an address where we should write this payload into the Oracle memory, because we wouldn't like to stop the Oracle database. So we need a memory address. And the safest thing is that to use the Windows API memory allocation function virtual alloc. You remember, this is our hijack session, which is still working. So I'm, I'm going to do this through a hijack sysdba session. We're initializing the aura debug usage. As you can see, I'm going to call the virtual alloc Windows API, which allocates memory on Windows. I'm allocating 1,000 bytes. And the access mask of this new, newly allocated memory will be read, write, and execute because we would like to write a payload and we would like to run that payload. Fortunately, Aura Debug is quite generous for us because if you call a function like this, you receive back the return value. And in this case, the return value is just the starting address of the newly allocated memory. So we are using this address in our Metasploit module. And running the exploit command. And as you can see, all the back command just written into, into the SQL file. The next step is just calling this SQL file from the hijack session. And no our payload in, in the Oracle process memory. And we didn't touch the disk, and it is safe, because we allocated it before. So we didn't overwrite any important uh, structure in Oracle. OK, but how can we execute this safely? We can create a thread with the Windows API, create thread function. And of course, we need the starting address of our payload. And it was successful. And if we check, as you can see, the Oracle is still running. And our hijack station is still running. This is a bind meta TCP payload, so we need a handler for it from Metasploit. And as you can see, we have the new shiny meta session through a hijack session. Okay, uh, but 
it would be great if we hijack the session. We can download the password hashes and try to crack it, but might be the password are strong. So we cannot crack the, the password hashes, but we can do. At the beginning of the presentation, Ferenc show what kind of function should be hooked to get the password from the Oracle client. We can do the same at the server side also, but with different function. So we have a MetaPetter extension for the server side also. From this point, if somebody logs into the database, we will have its password. But how can we convince the database to authenticate it or hijack session? It's quite easy. Might be I already have this database link, so might be create a new one. We are creating a public database link, and because we are using the ORCS service identifier, which is the service identifier of the current database, this link will point to the same database. So not a remote database, but to the same database. And we can select against this database link. Of course, it won't work, but what we need is the log final. And as you can see, the password encryption and the password decryption function was called in the database. Because in this case, we just convinced the database to authenticate against itself. So this password belongs to the CC user, to that connection that we just hijacked. But just see what's happened because it happened a lot. A lot of things happened, sorry. Uh, as you can see, we have the already hijacked session with the sysdba user. We did, from this uh, hijack session, we injected a MetaPetter payload into the Oracle process memory. We loaded a MetaPetter extension and hooked the two uh, interesting function that is used through, uh, during the authentication for the password encryption and for the password decryption. Then we created a public database link that points to the database itself and issued a select against this public database link. And because of that, we just convinced the database to do uh, authentication against itself. So call these two functions. And now we can just get the log file and get the password of the hijack session. So what happened here is that we combined all of the things above. So writing a MetaPetter uh, extension, hijack the Oracle session, uh, of a sysdba user. Uh, writing the MetaPetter payload into the Oracle memory, at the end we have the highest privilege user password in our hand. And you have easy to use Metasploit modules for this attack. Of course it has some version and platform dependencies and more development is needed in this regard, but they are usable. And be careful when you are using Aura Deepak because Oracle is huge. The Windows executable is 130 megabyte long. So be careful what you are doing with in the Oracle process memory. Analyze system. Okay, but uh, we are not Oracle guys only. So we don't, we don't deal with Oracle only. So let's see how can we hijack the MS SQL. History. There are lots of tools out there that can do something with, the, uh, with an MS SQL connection. For example, they are able to downgrade the encrypted authentication protocol to an unencrypted one. Or they can uh, log the credentials and, uh, for offline brute forcing or uh, for the coding. But until now, there was no tool for uh, hijacking. How it is working? Normally, the victim connects to the database with authentication and data exchange. If you initiate the classic R-cache poisoning attack and the IP tables Kung Fu that I already mentioned, you can convince the client to communicate through you, so through the TDS proxy. Unfortunately, I didn't find a quit message in the TDS protocol. Therefore, you have to tell the TDS proxy you want to hijack this connection. In this case, the TDS proxy will 
close the connection to the victim, but won't close the connection to the database. Instead, it starts a new thread waiting for connection and simulates the authentication when the, auto, when the attacker connects to this thread. And when the attacker sends a SQL query, it will be forwarded on the same communication channel and socket that was used by the victim. And because of that, the database will run the SQL query in the name of the victim. So the same hijack happened here uh, just you saw previously. And because of the authentication simulation, you can use the normal MS SQL clients here as an attacker. Of course, we have a live demo. And uh, Microsoft, we are on the Microsoft land, so the TDS proxy has a very nice GUI, very polished 3D everything. I am very proud of it. It took me more in development than doing the real stuff. And uh, fortunately, you can use the Metasploit or Exility MS SQL modules against uh, Microsoft SQL. So this is the TDS proxy, and this is the shiny new uh, GUI of the TDS proxy, 3D and everything. Let's try to connect to a MS SQL database. And of course, I already started the ARP cache poisoning attack. I hope it will work. So we are connecting to a database. As you can see, the connection was successful, and it went through the TDS proxy. We use the Microsoft Management Studio as a client because it has a very useful feature. It will connect to the database several times, which means you have a lot of connection. So if you hijack one of them, the client won't notice anything. So hijack the second one. Watch his hands. He's hacking by clicking. Yes, <laughs> I use the mouse. There is no any command line kung fu, just the GUI. Okay, so the new hijacks that started and waiting for connection on this port. And let's go back to the console. <laughs> <laughs> Where the least stuff will happen. So uh, you can use, as I mentioned, the uh, Metasploit to connect to the hijack thread. Let's use the most simple Metasploit module that just ran a SQL query against the, Oracle, against the MS SQL database. And as you can see, I'm connecting to the proxy. The password is not important at all because it is a hijack session, so it's not important. And I'm running the exploit. And as you can see, we just received the username and password hashes through a hijack session. And in every presentation that talks about the MS SQL, you have to mention the XPCMD shell that can be used to run operating system level command from MS SQL. And of course, Metasploit has a module for that. And of course, you can use this also. I'm setting up the same hijack thread. So another feature, you can connect to the hijack thread as many times as you want. Of course, not parallelly. So the attacker go home or go to a bookshop and buy a new SQL book, you know, and come back and continue the hacking. And as you can see, we successfully ran an operating system level command through the hijack session. We just sent the XPCMD shell to the database. Okay, some notes. We have to modify the MS SQL.RB core mixing in Metasploit to add more support for a newer protocols. Uh, we made this because to have the ability to use the Metasploit module against the TDS proxy. If you're not using the uh, Metasploit module, you can use the MS SQL clients, but you have to use the same client version as the victim used. Of course, the TDS protocol is not as complex as the TNS protocol, but still complex uh, anywhere. But anyway, you can use the Metasploit module. So this is the packet that you receive back after a successful authentication from the server, from an MS SQL server. In this packet, there is a login acknowledgement uh, token. And in the login acknowledgement token, you can find the TDS version. So I just parse this packet and add, this, add these two lines to the Metasploit 
to have this information in the module. And later, I can make decision regarding this version number, how to parse the packets or how to send out uh, the packets. So honestly, I know this slide is abs absolutely unnecessary because it doesn't know, doesn't say anything, but I want to just fulfill the requirements to show network packets in a hacker presentation and show code. So you know have it. Okay, summary of the presentation. As we promised, there was no SQL injection in this presentation and we are proud of it. We showed you how can you hack the Oracle client or what kind of function should be hooked. We showed how can you really hijack an Oracle session with the TNS poison attack and with PyTNS proxy. We showed you how can you hack Oracle in Commodore 64 style. And I think we proved we don't deal with just Oracle. So if we consider this presentation, I'm sure we proved you it worth think differently about the database hacking. And uh, one more thing. Yeah. So uh, we know our presentation wasn't sexy. Wait a minute. Wasn't sexy because we didn't show you any supercharged SQL injection. This slide does not exist. This is how can you run operating system level commands run a SQL injection in Oracle, but this slide doesn't exist. Uh, and we didn't show you any HTML5 JavaScript trickery. And we didn't show any new shiny Metasploit module, but it's oh, not true yeah. because we had some of them. But we didn't show you any mobile. But we can help on that. Yeah. No friends, I'm just managing him. <laughs> so you can see the resource consumption of an Oracle server, a fully patched Oracle server on Windows. <coughs> and I have a mobile application with a big red button. <laughs> Nothing more, and hope it will work. I'm pushing this big red button. Watch the screen, watch the screen, and, and, and it will work, yeah. As you can see, it consumes all CPU, the Oracle will consume all CPU resources. And this is only just one connection, pre-authentication. Third connection. And if you, are, if you continue this uh, after a couple of minutes, the Oracle will quit. So, uh, this is a Daniel of service attack. Uh, we cannot disclose the details because we didn't report this to Oracle. It's just only one year old bug. Yeah. <laughs> but we, are, we are still working uh, on the advisory yes. for, for a year. The it, <laughs> it reached the two pages long yeah. in a year. It's almost ready. Almost ready, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we, our presentation is sexy now. Yeah. This does not exist. Yeah. Okay. These are the references, but you can download everything, so you will see. This is how can you reach us. And the good news, everything can be downloaded from our web page. So everything is there. Download it, play with it, and report bugs, and ask features, and everything. And thank you for your attention.